So uh, 15 years ago, if you went to Stanford to the computer lab, it was called Sweet Hall. Um, today, it's no longer a, a, a computer lab. I think it's some sort of administrative building. Because um, uh, nowadays, everyone just uh, uses their own computer, I think. Um, they, don't, they don't need to have these Sun workstations or SGI workstations. But back then, if you went to the computer lab, um, it, it, you would see kind of the state of the art in terms of graphics back then. It was, it was very different. Um, and as a, as a quick aside, uh, you, you had to bring san hand sanitizer if you went to that lab, uh, at, at least, at least uh, uh, thinking back, I, sh I should have brought hand sanitizer. I don't even know if uh, Purell existed back then, but, um, but I should have brought it because if you looked at those keyboards, it was really disgusting. I mean, you, you could see grime between the keys on the sides of the keys. Yeah. Um, the tops of the keys were clean because that's where everyone was typing. So, I mean, well, I guess clean, quote unquote. I mean, I don't know how, how clean it was, but I'm sure the biology department would have had great interest in coming to that, that lab to discover what kinds of... Uh, New strains of bacteria were developing um, in that lab, uh, but uh, <laughs> just let's just say that hygiene was not the foremost among students' minds um, in that lab. Um, but anyway, so the, the the those workstations were state of the art. So you know, you, you think back to what you could do in those machines, and it, it was maybe like a teapot or something. Like it, it was a 3D thing, and you know, it was nowhere near what you would see with you know, the, the, the 3D games that you see today or, or anything you see today. Um, and, and you would never dream of doing anything close to what, you know, Photoshop or Illustrator could do back then. Um, uh, because back then, actually doing things in software was just a lot faster. But, but today, I mean, you think about it, I mean, the, these, these devices, they have more power in them than this big, big, big SGI workstation back then. Um, so I think it's really interesting that today we're going to be able to push the envelope with, with graphics. Uh, on these devices, and even five years ago, I think we were already doing more than than what those workstations could do, um, which is just the, the mind-boggling thing um, of, of how quickly uh, the the graphics hardware has shrunken down to something this small that you can just do amazing things with them. Yeah, I think it's interesting that uh, Steve Jobs, you know, the the whole Pixar and all that kind of stuff like that, came out of this uh, idea to demonstrate that the computer hardware to d demonstrate the, the the capabilities of the machine and out of that grew this whole company that uh, that we now know as, as Pixar. Well right, right and, and that's the crazy thing is so Render Man was this whole idea of writing shaders and that, that's where this whole notion of shaders came from is um, you know these these these, these the big graphics guys, Catmull and Clark, you know, started this company and, and they wrote Render Man uh, which was the idea of doing it, and do it, this was done in software. It was the idea of, of, of shading polygons, and it's called shading because you're actually, you know, it's thinking of an artist. You're, 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 you're laying down paint, your color, and, and you're shading in a particular way so that, you know, that you're pretending the light hits in a certain angle, and, and you, can, you can fill each in, individual uh, pixel of that polygon in a particular way and have full control over it. Um, and so what happened with OpenGL2 and shaders was that they said, well, let's, let's bring that into hardware and, and, and make it work in, in, in speeds that are almost real time. And so suddenly you're able to now paint every pixel. And, you know, back then when you took a, you know, 15 years ago, if you took a computer, computer graphics class, they were telling you about, you know, this lighting equation and how there, there's this, like, there's three lighting equations, like Fong lighting and, and Garo shading. And, and there's like, there's two shades. Basically, there's two ways to light something. Uh, now you're like, oh, well, we can write any shader we want. That can be, you know, your own made-up thing that came from the fifth dimension, and who knows, right? It doesn't even matter um, how you do it. You can do whatever you want, and so suddenly people are able to do these things like, uh, you know, real-time blur effects. They can do painterly effects where things look almost cartoonish if they wanted to, um, you know, taking an input as a real image. I mean, you can do just all these crazy things you would never be able to do. And, and, and if you remember, uh, if you read, if you watch any of the document, document, documentaries on, on Pixar, when they when they had to launch the first Toy Story movie, uh, you know, I think I think they are rendering individual frames. Like this is like one thirtieth of a second. An individual frame would take like hours to render, and they were like they were like renting out you know Sun workstation farms to to render this thing. And now people are just like, oh well, you know what? We're going to do this at sixty frames a second now on this little like this little device here. So. I really think the transition of hardware has really just unleashed this this creativity um, for people, and 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 what people are really missing now is the ability to to do this without really having a whole staff of people, you know, play with a, a software product like RenderMan. And and so what we want to do is say, hey, why don't we allow you to do all the things that you're used to doing in like Photoshop and Illustrator, 
Um, uh, but they give you the full power of, uh, of where you can do, like, you know, you don't need a progress bar, you don't need to wait, and you can do these in real time. You can render these things 60 frames a second, but you also don't have to uh, think about it in a really uh, movie production style way. I think when you're, when you're creating a movie, I think, uh, I think back to uh, this, this photo I saw. There's a black and white photo, still photo, of, of Alfred Hitchcock on the set of Psycho, and it's him in this chair. There's these, like, like these ten lights all over the set. There's this whole like all these props in the set, and then there's there's the there's the actress. I think it's Janet Lays. I think it's what her what her name was. And 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 you know there's a there's a guy with the makeup and doing all this stuff to make sure everything just looks just right for the camera. And 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 and, and, and Hitchcock is directing. And and so, I mean, you think about that, and you're like, well, that's essentially what you have to do when you create a three D a, a real like three D a, a real three D game. But I think um you know I don't I, I think a lot of people out there want to do Things that aren't quite so um, production heavy, um, and they and, and and a lot of stuff out there you can actually do really cool things that aren't aren't production heavy. Um, if if and all they need is a little bit of things that look 3D, um, and so that's what we're doing with the new graphics engine. We're saying, hey, why don't we uh, enable you to do 3D like effects without doing real 3D, without having to worry about this notion of that there is a third dimension. You can all you can pretend there actually is no third dimension, and, and that's what we're trying to do. Is and that's what we mean by some of these uh, 3D perspective effects that we're going to enable in the new graphics engine. That you could uh, you know you could take a, a postcard and pretend that it's somewhere in space, but in actuality, um, if if you put another postcard on top of it, um, it'll it'll obey that order. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about these weird things like oh I have to position the camera here, and so therefore these objects are in front of these other objects, or or no the camera's here, and so now these objects are in front of these objects. Um, you don't have to worry about that. It's just like you know. Hey, I'm laying things on top of each other, um, and if some of them look like they're in 3D, well, they, they as far as you know, they are. So um, that's kind of what we're trying to do here. So think of like cover flow in Finder, uh, in the Finder. Um, those are 3D effects, and they could have been done in 3D, but uh, as far as we can tell, they should, they could easily be done um, uh, in Corona as well, and that's what we're aiming to do. Yeah, because as you say, uh, cover flow, for example, is a uh, something everybody's familiar with. So let's talk about that. That's yeah, that is just a matter of manipulating the perspective as the thing goes along. It's actually going along a line, but it but it it gets big, right, it right. Gets bigger it, it, to it's smaller. It's actually moving in two D. It's yeah. moving moving in two D. You're not you're not like moving into it or moving away from it. It's it's all these it's all these three things that are stacked on top of each other like you know like a deck of cards. Um, and so you know you, you're actually you, you, when you're you're actually doing sort of three like effects, but you don't really need full three D to do them. Um, and and so we're going to enable those kinds of awesome effects in 3D, because and, and 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 so that you can create 3D-like experiences without the headache of, of worrying about that that extra third dimension. It, it turns out that thinking in terms of that third dimension is really hard. It's like, you know, you know, pe people when you grow up, you know, and 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 you know, it, when you when, when you're growing up, you're you're not you're not sculpting right away. <laughs> you're drawing on pieces of paper. I mean, if you think about how many how many famous painters there are versus famous sculptors, I think it just goes to show that more peop most people naturally think better in 2D than in 3D. We're not on the air. We're, we're just recording. I'm recording it. We're having a it's a it's a hangout just between the two of oh, us. Oh, you you are recording it right now. But I'm recording, yeah. Oh, oh! It doesn't even tell me. It's like you're supposed to tell me if this call is going to be monitored for quality assurance. <laughs>